Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever it is uh, that you are, whenever you're watching. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking more about visualization. I'm going to be sharing a few stories uh, from other people's lives. So we're going to be learning a lot today and it's going to be super awesome. So without further ado, let's get right into it. I know I said it in my last video, but visualization is one of the keys to having the life that you've always wanted. It's one of the keys to achieving anything that you want. And it's, it's pretty incredible. Once you start to, to visualize and, and see what happens because of that, uh, your life is gonna be able to, to start to change and you're gonna see it happen. Visualization is having a mental image of something that you want to have happen in your life or in the near future. Be, being able to see that in your mind's eye and eventually having the outcome happen, not just in your mind, uh, but in real life. Visualization, mindfulness, uh, the intention to create, whatever you want to call it, it wasn't always that big of a deal back in the day. And in fact, it was really weird for a lot of athletes to hear uh, when you start talking about that mindfulness or visualization. But it's gone to the point today that you would be hard pressed to find a professional athlete that doesn't visualize and doesn't understand how to do it. I know 1960, Billie Jean King uh, was one of the first that I heard of that started to visualize Billie Jean, Billie Jean King, the tennis player. Um, that visualization wasn't huge back then. If you, if you think about some of the, the major athletes, Michael Jordan, uh, amazing at visualization. You probably haven't heard the name George Mumford, but he was one of uh, the sports psychologist that, that brought that visualization, that mindfulness to Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen, Dennis Rodman, to those bowls. They went on to having that three-peat, which is pretty incredible in any sport. And Phil Jackson, they call him the Zen master. He, he had that, that correct state of mind to bring George Mumford in to help them with that visualization. And they took a team that wasn't doing so hot, that was trending in the wrong direction, and they turn them into those bowls that we all know and love. In today's sports, Michael Phelps visualizes a lot. Russell Wilson, one of my favorite football players, um, I've heard him talk about visualization. One of my favorite players to ever play in the NFL, Tony Gonzalez, was recently inducted into the Hall of Fame. I remember reading an interview, this wasn't recently, this was a few years ago, and in that interview with him they said, hey, what sets you apart as an athlete? And Long story short, it's visualization. It was, you know, seeing in his mind's eye, leaping up, grabbing that touchdown pass and coming down with it, scoring those touchdowns, running the correct routes, uh, getting the footwork right. It's pretty incredible to hear these athletes uh, talk about that visualization. I was watching the Olympics on TV when it was in Sochi. Did I say that right, Sochi in Russia? And, I'm watching the luge and my friend comes over. We're sitting there watching and, and, and in the beginning of the luge they have to they have to push off really hard off the ice to build up that momentum to finish off that to go down the course to finish it strong. So I'm sitting there with my friend and they're showing a few of the people that are ready to start luging and every once in a while you would see them with their eyes closed and, and they'd start they'd start doing this with their hands really fast. And my buddy's like, what are they doing? And I told him they're visualizing, they're visualizing uh, that push-off. And then after they visualize that push-off with their eyes closed, you start to see them, you know, sway whichever way to get ready to, to go in and out of those turns. And, and they're, they're visualizing before one of the biggest moments of their lives. And so athletes do it, celebrities do it. Uh, a really cool story about Jim Carrey is he wrote himself a check for ten million dollars. Uh, he was dirt broke, he used to go up onto Mulholland Drive, overlook the city, and he used to visualize getting roles, and he used to visualize acting. And I'm gonna put a, a video description to Fearless Soul that takes some of his audio, puts some music to it, makes a nice little video about some of these quotes that Jim, Jim Carrey has and what he's talked about. He is one of the masters at visualizing and it's pretty incredible to see where he came from and where he's at today and there's countless you know celebrities athletes success stories of people that had nothing and because of visualization uh, they're they're able to create something out of themselves 
Uh, the cool one with Jim Carrey is, you know, dirt poor, he wrote himself a check for $10 million, I believe, and he dated it a few years down the road uh, for November of 1995. So he writes himself out that $10 million check, he keeps it in his wallet, he takes it everywhere he goes, and in 1995, you know, two, three, four years later, he'll tell you in the video, um, he ends up cashing that check because that's how much he made when he was casted in Dumb and Dumber. One of the things that Jim Carrey talks about with visualization is you can't just visualize and then sit down and eat a sandwich and expect all these amazing things to happen to you. You still have to have hard work. Um, getting your subconscious mind right, visualizing and hard work are the three most important things uh, that you can be doing uh, to create, create the life that you've always wanted to. Another great story about visualization comes from Tony Robbins. Um, he was at one of his seminars, he was having people write down the amount of money that they want to make and, and by when, and so he's talking to these people and there was this young lady who says, well I want to, I want to make X amount of dollars uh, and I want to make that in I think it was seven weeks or something like that, don't quote me on this story, but she wanted to make that money. Um, so, you know, he. He could have been like, well, you know, you've never made that much before and you're only giving yourself the short amount of time to do it, so maybe let's cut back on that goal, is, is some of the things he wanted to talk to her about, uh, but she was so excited about this goal and she started visualizing it and she started believing it, I think it was $170,000, and on the day that she had written, seven or so weeks later, she won the lottery for $170,000. This incredible thing happened, she lets Tony Robbins know, and of course, in seminars later, he's sharing this story. Um, what he doesn't want people to take out of this story is, oh, I just need to visualize and I don't need to do anything, life will be great. Um, you still have to work, but he's telling this story, and this older couple gets just that out of it. Well, if she can win the lottery, I can win the lottery. They start visualizing it, they write it down, they start telling everybody they know, that hey, we won the lottery. But people realized they hadn't actually won the lottery and they just thought they were crazy. They started living their lives as if it already happened. And guess what? Not once, not twice, but three times the charm, they won the lottery. I don't know how much the lottery was for, but it was over a million dollars. I'm sharing these stories to show you what can happen, not to tell you that you don't have to have work involved. But your mind is, is truly that powerful. As you get your energy, uh, matched with the energy of those things around you. As you get your subconscious mind interconnected with your other thoughts, amazing things can happen, and that's what visualization does. Let me tell you how I visualize. Obviously, I want my lungs to be healthier, I want my body to start to repair itself, and so what I do is every morning I take about five to 10 minutes to visualize. Figure out what's right for you and how much you can handle. When you first start visualizing, it's kind of hard, uh, but it gets better. As you, as you practice. So I close my eyes and I think about running a 5K. I'm there, I'm, I'm running through the mountains. As I'm running, I can feel my heart beating. Um, I can hear and feel you know, my, my feet hitting the ground one after another. The birds are chirping, the wind is blowing in the trees and I'm focusing on my breathing. And I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out and there's no pain involved with that. My lung doesn't hurt. I'm able to get all the oxygen I need. I'm not out of breath. And I look down and I look at my tracker and I've, I've ran three miles. Okay, so I'm, I'm towards the end of my 5K and I'm just happy. I'm healthy, I'm able to breathe. And not only do you visualize, okay, the, the sweat that's coming, the breath that you're taking, those things around you so you're also trying to visualize all of the senses but then you have to visualize how you feel you have to feel the emotions coming in because I'm happy I'm excited that I'm finally healthy and I'm just at, at peace with where I am and I have all these emotions flooding in that just make me want to feel like I can take on the world visualizing as much detail as you can 
but then also allowing yourself to feel that feeling of what that's gonna be like. Some of the other visualizations that I do is, is just playing outside with my family, uh, seeing my wife playing with the kids, uh, wrestling around, jumping on the trampoline, uh, seeing them just having fun, being happy, and being cute like they always are. So those are the things I visualize, and again, great detail, allow yourself to feel that emotion. Stay tuned, I'm going to put a link to another video, or it, find it on my channel, um, of a visualization activity. A lot of people think that they can't visualize, but I, I absolutely know you can. It just, again, takes practice for some of us. So I'm gonna put a link to a visualization activity uh, that you guys can do. You maybe have done it before, but it's really cool. We'll do that activity, talk about that a little bit. Uh, but thank you so much for, for tuning in, and I'll see you soon.